Welcome to Drum and Drummer, a podcast focused on drums, drumming and drummers. I'm George Pickering and that's Ben Winty and we are both professional drummers in this business we call music. So stick around and join us as we pass the time whilst trying to stay in time. I've never seen nine video screens go blank <laughs> <Yeah>. quicker. <laughs> Welcome to Drum and Drummer. Welcome. How are you? All right, George. Yes. 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 Yeah. Fine. How was your Easter? Yeah, it was good. I worked all day Easter Sunday. I'll be honest, this year I didn't really even know when Easter was. Same. Like Never my brother, do. My Never brother said, do. we've got a Pickerings group chat. And Tom, my brother, said, uh, are we doing anything for Easter? Shall I come back? And I was like, I don't even know when it is. It could be today, and I don't know. And I'm going to go straight in with something that annoys me about Easter that didn't used to be a thing. Yeah. So Easter eggs, yes. I feel like when I was a kid, they used to sell them because for whatever reason, Easter egg chocolate seems to taste nicer than just a chocolate bar. And so I'm always excited 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 there we go now we're starting not even a minute in <laughs> and uh so they used to sell them and i swear they used to sell them like i don't know a month before easter and then but the thing was once easter was over they'd sell them off cheap and there'd mm. be loads of eggs for like a week and they'd all be like 50p or whatever now they start selling them in january and before i even got to easter weekend there weren't really any easter eggs left you know, because I feel embarrassed buying an Easter egg in January because it's like, why are you, you it's way too early. Yeah. But you can't even do the thing anymore where it's like, oh, I'll wait till they're all cheap because they're all gone. I don't, and I don't know where they go. You know, I feel fat like they people. actually, fat people yeah, buy them. Fat people. There you go. They buy them by the truckload. This is it. They sell out too quick. Yeah. So that's my pet peeve. You know, I had one Easter egg this year and I'm almost sad because I'm like, got to wait another at least nine months before they're on sale again you know mm. um but yeah that's that's my thing about easter did you have a nice easter yeah it's fine thank you yeah yeah Can't again didn't really it's not anything no. that ever registers with me no never did anything as a family never meant anything yeah so if i get an egg great i'll eat it <laughs> yeah and uh that's about it it's really a bit, like, a bit like world aids day it hasn't quite on quite got on like christmas <laughs> As Ricky Gervais said. Um, they're, try, they're trying to make it a big thing though, aren't they? Yeah, what, World AIDS Day? No, Easter. Sorry. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Christmas yeah. 2. Yeah. I was thinking of that Simpsons joke where they create Love Day. Yeah. So another <laughs> thing to, to fill, a, fill a month in the calendar. Yeah. You know, and they mention Christmas 2. Um, this is it. Yeah. Ah, fine, isn't it? But, yeah. okay, so um, <laughs> we got a gig tonight. We do, yeah. Are you uh, ready? I don't, I don't know, mate. It's weird, it's, isn't it? I'm so... Yeah. First of all, it's a Tuesday today. It's a Tuesday, so that's weird off the bat. Yeah. Like, it's uncommon. Yeah. Um, it's my first gig of the season. Yep. It's not, not yours. Well, it's not mine, but it's, it, I'm playing bass. So it's the mm. first time I played bass in whenever we last did a gig together, you and I. October. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so It's definitely... It's been... I think this has been the longest gap of playing weddings in the t 11 yeah. years I've done it. Yeah. I don't think I've ever had a real... This was this is literally about six months off. Of well, should we discuss that? Because you've, you know, been doing it longer than I have, obviously. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How much of a drop off has it been since the glory years? Big, yeah. really. I think it's dropping off for... Uh, it's dropping off for a lot of people. This is uh, yeah, because and I think there's I think there's several reasons. I might be wrong, but these Shoot. are my opiniones. Yeah. Um, Didn't know you spoke Italian. Well, see, si, see, si. Bon. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> um, ciao bella. That was good. Thank you. Um, Lemoncello. I think. <laughs> I think there's. <laughs> no, go on. I think there's a few reasons. Yeah. One, cost of living. Yep. It's expensive. So that means that, yeah, people aren't booking vans. People aren't spending as much money, you know, yeah, on um, elaborate events. Yeah. Like, 
it and it's it's people will still spend money on the weddings. Yeah. But they're not spending it on parties. Yeah. We do a lot of like fiftieth birthdays, fortieth birthdays, sixtieth birthdays, you mm. know. The big round numbers. People aren't bothering. It's too yeah. expensive, saving their pennies. I think people I think there's still a COVID lag. Yeah. Where COVID obviously cancelled gigs essentially for eighteen months. And then it just spread the seasons out over a longer mm. period of time. And people were booking further in advance. And it just kind of, essentially, the way I think of it is we've done three seasons over four years. Yeah. And people were, and, and so there were less outliers in terms of dates, less in the early spring and late autumn, just more yeah. in the summer. Um, companies didn't do Christmas parties, obviously, yep. in COVID. And I think they're not going to bother again. No. Because they realised uh, they saved loads of money. And plus, people, a lot of people now work from home. Yep. So don't want to bother going into the Christmas party. Yeah. So that's why, you know, didn't do any any gigs at Christmas. And this is, I'm just talking about gigs through the agency that I drum for. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'm not, yeah. you know. Um, and in my opinion, our agency has too many bands. Yeah, I think that's a big part of it. I think that's a huge part of it. When, when Decade were first on the agency, we were one of like 10 bands. Yeah. So if you wanted an indie rock four piece, there was only three options. Yeah. Now there's about 50. Yeah. And so what happens is that works for the... I understand why the agency do it. They, you know, in, in those peak summer weekends, June, July, August, if they want to book a, a band, but their eight vintage bands are already booked... Well, if he's got a ninth on the books, exactly, he's still going to make the money. But what that yeah. means then is if you've got someone looking to book a vintage band in April, none of those nine bands have a gig, so you've got a one in nine chance. Yeah. Whereas before, well, we were the only one, yeah. so we're doing the gig. Yeah. Um, so it works for the agency, but I think it has a direct effect on the bands. That's why I'm in three, because <laughs> then you're kind of more likely to, more Definitely. likely to be working... But what it does is kind of removes a lot of the outlier months. Yeah. Um, so I think it's just a combination of those things. And you never know. Like, you know, we we there's bands on the agency who are like in their early 20s. Mm. I think they probably look cooler than us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. So I think but it's it all those things. And it's just meant, you know, and, and I've had other... Ex very experienced stalwarts of the agency, you know, musicians who've been doing it as long as me, if not longer, mm. getting in touch with me going, have you got any gigs? Yeah. Like, what's going on with your bands? And basically mm. everyone is not gigging as much as they once were. I mean, I'll send you back, George, to 2014. Yep. Two of my, the two bands I was in had over 50 gigs each. Yeah. In one calendar year. Now between three bands, I maybe do 35. Yeah. So I think there's some issues as well they've got with how they're pricing certain things as well. Like yeah. it's just some of the fees you look and you go, and I'm not talking about necessarily our fees, but I'm talking about other cuts. Yeah. And you're <laughs> like, that's a lot. Yeah. And and some of the fuel calculations, it's like, nah, that's yeah. a lot of money. So I think just gradually it's all gone up and... um. It's 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 had that effect, which and I I think now, I think is I, I was chatting to Neil the other day and I was like, is this the end now of being able to make a living from playing weddings? Mm. Is this it now? Is it now got to the point where it's no, kind could, of diluted probably. itself, where yeah. you just you can do it great, <laughs> but you have to have some other shit going on as well. I think it's definitely that. I was talking yeah. to a bassist the other day. We were driving back from a gig and we were saying like wouldn't it be great if it you could just live on it because right now i'd love to do that you know yeah but i mean it's just it's visible just, like victoriana not. 2014 had 58 gigs yeah well, this year we've got six yeah there you go this is it it's uh yeah it's sad but i think that's it it's it's there's something good going on and everyone goes oh get involved in this and then slowly everyone's involved and then no one can be involved anymore because everyone's doing it. Yeah, so and at what point left. do you go, it's not it's not worth doing it for just for so little. Yeah. You need to have something else to... 
Well, that's you know, what we were saying about bring the Benjamins home. You know, one of my bands is ending, and it's because you know the other members have other things going on, which is totally fair enough. Um, and you know, there there could be an argument of like, well, there's so few gigs, what you may as well keep it going anyway. But then there's also the argument of like. Well, there's so few gigs that you may as well end it. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. Sort yeah, of yeah. like it's not worth it. It's not worth it either yeah. way. Um, yeah. However, I've had a few recently, uh, and so I had one last week after I moved in. Oh yeah, moved into a new flat. That's it. Yeah, you're in the new gaff now. In the new gaff. How's I'm it just, going? It's great. It's really it's it's exciting. We're getting there. We're kind of, I mean, you've moved out of places before. You know how it is. Exactly. We're sort of. Um, in that period where we're like, you can't really settle yet because it's not completed. Like, uh, this bed is just a mattress on the floor at the moment. We haven't got a bed frame yet. But we can't relax. We can't go, oh, we'll do it later. Like, it's you can't relax because nothing's done. But we're like, but we need a break from just, I don't know, sorting stuff. But because um, it has been relentless. Like, I moved in. When did I move in? Friday? last two weeks ago um friday and saturday was all moving in and out and then i think sunday i was working all day basically the last two weeks has just been chaos with the new job moving in and out and i've had a couple of gigs but um but it's great because it's getting there and it's uh i'll just say this quickly as weird as it sounds i'm busier than ever but actually more settled than ever do you know what i mean because it's i'm not self-employed really anymore you know the gigs are but i've got a full-time job but it's like that's all in one place i don't have to go oh where am i teaching today it's like mm. no no just go to my one place of work but consistency and also, yeah exactly and, and now you you know because if people have missed it you're now living with your partner yes i'm now living with alfie Beep, beep, so you're not beep, having beep. a hop between so houses I don't have to, yeah exactly i don't have to hop between houses so it's like even though I'm working 40 hours plus and gigging. Tops. <laughs> it's like, it's all in one place, you know, the work. And then I'm just sleeping in one place rather than different places. You know, I used to go back to Portsmouth for the, uh, you know, once yeah. a week. I'd stay at yeah. my mum's for a while. I was sleeping in three different houses. It was mental. Um, You're but vagrant. Yeah, <laughs> but, it's, but it's good. It's great. Uh, I'll have to have you round at some point. Sure. You're ever in Brighton. Um, cause we're keen to, keen to entertain. Um, but yeah, no, I'll tell you about these gigs. So we had one the other day. It was fine. Forget about it. Wedding. But there's something I have to say. And I know he, he said he's listening to the pod. So this is a shout out to Lennon, the singer. He was so good at sticking to like everything was running late. Like I think mm-hmm. our arrival time was like six and to like start setting up at quarter past six and someone came out who wasn't like the wedding organizer he was just a waiter but he was like oh by the way they're doing speeches they won't be out there till quarter to seven and we were like right well we're meant to be on at half seven or something like that and he was like yeah they you won't be able to get in till seven we were like right okay well we you know we still need 90 minutes to set up and Lennon just stuck to that, like with every person he spoke to, like a wedding organizer came out at some point and was like, right, how long do you guys need? And then it was like 90 minutes. And he was like, oh, okay, well, it's seven now. So you're going to be yes. on at half seven. Uh, so we'll do the math. Like, yeah. Lennon was like, well, we'll be on at half eight then. And then it was <laughs> just like, he was like, oh, could you not? But no, 90 minutes. And, uh, and then the bride came out and Lennon said the same thing to her she was nice about it she was like you know I'm sorry everything's running late and then there was like a compare as well and it was seven o'clock and he said right everyone go off to a different room for coffee and whatever and come back here for eight o'clock for the first (laughs) dance and Lennon went nope so he went to the compare as well and went just so you know mate can you tell them all again like you know it's actually half eight I was like, this is brilliant. And then Lennon was even like, I'm going to set a timer now. He said it to the event guy for 90 minutes. We'll be ready in 90 minutes. And yeah, we ended up going on like quarter to nine. But it was just brilliant because even I was starting to think like we could probably get it done in under that. Well, that's the thing. You can get it done a bit quicker depending on certain factors, you know, loading in and where the room is and all that stuff. Sometimes it does go down quicker. But this is just a classic case of your events run late. Yeah. And now you're putting the pressure on us 
to make up the time. Yeah. But the reason we have 90 minutes is it takes 90 minutes. Exactly. So, like, so it's not our fault. No. So don't give us shit. Yeah, exactly. So it, it's 90 minutes from starting. It's not 90 yeah. minutes from arrival. Yeah. If you're running <laughs> yeah. late, it's your problem. Yeah. The whole thing's going to run late. Why is, why is it on us? Why yeah. is it on us to, you know, one else was it? It's always speeches, speeches or it's well. just getting food out or just yeah, and, and people don't people underestimate how long it takes to move 100 people from one room to another yeah or to get them sat down yeah or to feed like yeah 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 this is it. it's I love speeches that. well done lennon well done yeah. lennon i'll yeah. say speeches far uh, the, and speeches. the more people sorry the more people yeah, who tell on. me who come up to me and say well, when are you going to be on can you hurry up can you up i actually start to move slower yeah <laughs> i start to do things slower yeah i, I don't care yeah. And this is the thing. You're still going to get your two hours of music. Yeah. You're still going to get it because we're here till fucking midnight. <laughs> and it's only eight o'clock. You're still going to get it. Exactly. So if any, if, if you want me to move faster, fuck off. Yeah. The more you talk, I'll start slowing down. You know? And I yeah. am like that. I do. I, I will do that. Yeah. And Good we're back. You. And we're back. <laughs> um, few notable things at the gig. A uh, lot of cake. Lovely amount of cake. Ooh. Okay. Just just like cake and brownies and just pizzas. Just pizzas everywhere. It's just mm. pizza and cake, which I love love all that. But we were sort of playing outside because it was at it was actually at like an R N L I headquarters almost. I don't okay. know, like at where they all come and start their whatever they do. Um yeah. saving lives. And uh but it was like a, it was like a marquee, so we were basically outdoors. And although spring is getting here, yeah, it's not quite too. here. Yeah, and it's yeah, a, it's yeah, that yeah. kind of weather where when it when the sun's out, it's hot. Sure. The moment it goes behind a cloud, it's cold. So I turned up in my shorts and instantly had to put jeans and a coat and a hat on. And um, yeah, when it got to the gig, it's not like we were wrapped up, but for the first few songs of the first set. I had my coat on because I was like, I am outside. Like it was like it was like the sea, and then I was at the back of the marquee, and it was just so cold. But you know, after a few uh, few um, skiffle songs or whatever the fuck they play, <laughs> getting <laughs> four arms up working. Yeah. Um, this is something drum related though that I can talk about. I used a different pair of sticks. I used seven A's on this gig. Okay. And my playing felt the best it's been maybe ever so i don't know what had happened um if it if if i've been using the wrong sticks this whole time well they're lighter they're, they're lighter. lighter so and it was and it's, it's like if you can lift 30 kilos yeah then when you lift 20 you go well, that's easy isn't it? well they, yeah exactly but it just felt so nice and i think also i tuned the snare up a lot so the snare sounded great i thought anyway and um yeah, it was just, you know, when you do a gig and it just feels like, oh, this is just mm. playing itself. So I'll see where we go with that. I might I might okay. be a 7A man now. Who knows? Um, mm. But yeah, those are the gigs. And then we've got one tonight. We've but got um, one tonight. Um, we, we sort of touched on this. So it's, it's my first gig of the season, but it's a Tuesday, so that's weird. Yeah. I haven't done one for about six months. Yeah. Strict sound and restrictions. Yeah. Strict sound restrictions tonight. So we have to plug into an in house speaker system and I've got to play the electric kit. <laughs> and um I'm borrowing um my mate Ox's electric kit. He's dropped it off nice. this morning. Nice. So this afternoon I'm gonna just set it up, make sure because I like to actually change it about a bit. Yeah. To try and make it a bit more comfortable. <laughs> so Set it to reggae style or whatever the <laughs> <laughs> preset is. So I like to put the snare on a snare stand yes, rather than course, on yeah. like the plastic rack. Yeah. And I actually put the cymbals on cymbal stands. Cool. So the only things on the rack are the, the, the two toms. Yeah. That um, makes sense. The hi hat, what I do is, is I actually I have my own hi hat pad, which is just a basic pad. It doesn't go up or down or anything. But I put that on a. I've got a sm very thin, small Yamaha straight stand mm -hmm. at the blacksmiths, and I put it on that, and then I can put the hi hat pedal underneath, so it feels more like. Then I can yeah. get it the right height and the right position. So I'm just going to set that up and uh, make sure that's all good to go. Nice. Um, yeah, and it's like loading in later than normal. 
Corporal yeah. Six arrival and it's 11 finish. So it's one of them yeah. where we're not there for that long. No. Could be fine. Could be horrendous. <laughs> who knows? Um, yeah. But I've got to remind myself what's the process when I yeah. to like send <laughs> yeah. the send the gig details to the band. I'm like, right, set list and stuff. I'm like, oh, I haven't done this for a while. Yeah. What do I do again? Yeah. Um, but then, yeah, we're, we're, we're back in. Back in. Um, back in, yeah. So, I mean, I'm seeing you there later, isn't it? Yep. And uh, next students. week we'll talk about how it went. Yeah. Unless it was completely uneventful. Um, yeah. It should be fun. I saw something on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a little video of, I believe it's Carter Beaufort. Right. And he, on his drum kit, he was showing, on the bass drum, he has this little clamp on the top mm-hmm. and this little kind of thing on, on it that he, he can hit. And what it is, it's an alarm system that notifies his drum techs something's gone wrong right. and he needs help. So, I don't know, he drops a stick or a skin breaks or something's come loose or whatever. He, he hits this thing with his drumstick and it's set then on the side of his setup is a little box with a light on and it goes red. Love it. And then that notifies the drum techs something's gone wrong and they'll press a button to say they've seen it and then I think it flashes mm. so he knows they've seen it and then they can come up and be like, what's going on? <laughs> but obviously then he doesn't have to like shout like, Something's gone wrong. Something's yeah. gone wrong. You know, yeah. it's like, boop, hit that little warning. Huh. And I was like, that's pretty cool, isn't it? That is pretty cool. Yeah. Let's hit that. Something's gone wrong. Yeah. Little, no, I love that. Boop. You know? But then um, he's got to relay what's gone wrong to them. But, you know, he's got rid of half the job calling them over. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's like, have you seen that video on Instagram where there's a drummer who his snare breaks? I mean, I feel like this happens a lot. It's snare and they change it. And they change it. I thought that was yeah. quite cool. Yeah. Just, uh, yeah, have a little little drum tech to change your snare when you've smashed it too hard or whatever. <laughs> but, um, yeah, yeah, very cool. And then, um, inspired by this week's gig of sound restrictions, I was having a bit of a deep dive yeah. on those quiet symbols. We've, yes. we've mentioned several yeah, times yeah, the Sildjian yeah. LATs, right? Then I saw that Evans do a set as well. Right. So Evans do a series called the DB1, which are a similar sim- like set of symbols that have loads and loads of holes in them and stuff, but they're, they're black. Right. And they're meant to do the same thing, reduce the volume by 80%. Mm. So, and you're looking, you're like, oh, well, they're made for like drum school. You know what I mean? Like where yeah. do you want quiet symbols, practicing at home, places where you just can't be loud or drum lessons where you don't want to keep, you don't want to get, be deaf by the end, you know, if you're teaching or the students, you know. Yeah. And I noticed as well that Evans do a set of skins called the DB1 Mm. and they are essentially the same. They're like 80% quieter and they're real, they're like mesh skins that you put on your snare, kick and toms. Mm Mm-hmm. Like you, you hit them and you still get a little bit of tone, but they're just a lot quieter. Yeah. So I was like, because what I was thinking was, you know, with with this week's gig, it's like the venue says it has to be electric kit. That's fine. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. But there's like a gig I've got in a couple of weeks where it's like a 95 dB sound limiter. I've played mm. there before and it's that thing of like, it doesn't say electric kit, so I'll use my real kit, but I just have to play quietly. Yeah. And you're constantly on edge as yeah. to where you're pushing, you know, pushing the sound limit and stuff. And it's just not as fun not mm. hitting the kit as hard. I'll say it again. It's like having a Ferrari and driving 30 miles an hour. Yeah. What's the point? Yep. You might as well have a Nissan Micra. <laughs> um, but then I saw, so I saw this guy's video on YouTube where he was trying out the, the Evans DB1 symbols and skins. Mm. And he put them on his whole kit. And because um, I'm thinking like, would they work? Would that be acceptable if you've got a really harsh sound limiter to just have the quiet skins mm. on? Or would they be like too quiet? Do they just not sound as good? And I watched him play and I was like, these are definitely just more suited to like practicing quietly yeah. on a real drum, you know, rather than a hard electric pad or whatever. But then 
he stuck a bunch of D drum trigger D drum triggers on them. Yeah. So the real drum was just on the with these mesh silent skins, these DB1 skins, was giving off fuck all. Mm. But he had drum triggers right. on them triggering real drum sounds. Right. So it was like he's hitting a real essentially hitting a real drum and a real skin. Yep. The the drum itself is giving off barely any sound. Yep. And then he's got these sweet trigger samples yeah. on the real <laughs> drum kit on his kick, snare and toms. So it was like is that is that a way is that the way That's forward? That's how you do it, yeah. Is that the way forward of you have these yeah, you have an acoustic kit yep. with silent skins and triggers running through some sweet samples. So f- as a drummer, you're playing as loud as you can, you know, as loud as yeah. you need to. Yeah. But the volume is really pretty much completely controllable. Yeah. And then the big test then is the silent symbols, whether it's the Zildjian L80s or the Evans DB1s, are they, A, are they too quiet for a gig? Mm. And B, does the sound quality, are they good enough for a gig? Yeah. Or are they like, they're really quiet, but quality-wise, you you can't get away with them? Yeah. So I was thinking, like, if you just had an, an acoustic kit, kick snare, one up, one down toms, the silent symbols. The silent skins with triggers. Is that is that the ideal setup? Is that just... Yeah. But what I mean then as well, is that even just better for normal gigs with no sound restrictions? Mm. Because then you're just... Especially in a lot of rooms, even if there's not a sound limiter, they're big rooms, they're tiled, they're windows, they're glass. They're f- there's no acoustic treatment. Yeah. So drums just sound so brash and and big... And then you're 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 reducing that on stage sound. Mm. Everyone's just got sweet kit in their ears. There's not really much sound on stage. So does that even make for a better out front sound? Yeah. Because you just don't have this real kit just swamping over everything. Yeah. It's like, oh it just got me thinking. I was like No, it's true. Is that just is that just the kind of setup that whatever the venue whatever the venue, whether there's sound restrictions or not whether it has to be electric kit or not, that just sounds best, works best, is yeah. best for the drummer, yeah, and actually has some advantages in front of house sound, yeah, because you've just got real control over the volume, even in a huge room with no sound restrictions, you've still just got better control, yeah. So, but like all things, George, for me to try that out, it's not, it was not cheap. No, 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 no. And you might money. do it, and then you're like, oh, that's rubbish. It yeah, don't, also, don't work. there could be, because people are very black and white, and not everyone, but in these sort of settings, if you turn up to a gig, that, and they're expecting electric kit, and they go, what's that? You know, you turn up with my fucking, the biggest kick drum in the world kit, and uh, no, like, no, 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 it is quiet. <laughs> like, you have to explain, no, no, I've got 80, 80% quieter skins. But like, what? And triggers, they'd be like, ah, what? But no, that is the boast of worst world, the best of both worlds, because uh, it's... Um, <laughs> it's Because selfishly, no I'm thinking really of it as a player. player. Well, yeah, no one really likes playing electric kit, because for whatever reason, it just it's so different to a drum kit. Like, yeah. You know, so yeah, and it's not selfish, because, you know, tonight you'll be playing differently, because you're playing... Yeah on pads but yeah if you're playing on skins then yeah it's that i think that's probably the closest isn't it yeah and so evans quietly. d drum yeah let yeah. me have a go yeah can i have a go please yeah i'd just like to try it out without spending any money that they do the symbols as well when you said evans it is interesting yeah it's like oh yeah. hello branching out i think i guess they've gone well if we're gonna do silent skins you can't have loud symbols no and we don't want to send them to the z boys yeah well this is so it. let's just make our own you know yeah. so you can just get it all in one, one maybe they've been shop. hit by the hit by the cost of living they're like Fuck, i've got to make symbols now as well <laughs> not just skittens um yeah so no, yeah i'd cool. love to try it out but yeah but then I'm you dead. need you know you need um because I was, I was looking at the d jump I can't set D drum triggers. You got it. And they got, thank you. 
and they got loads of different um, different models. Yeah, they've got the uh, Vinnie Paul trigger set. Oh they've yeah, they've got the Chrome Elite, the Acoustic Pro, the Red Shot, and that's it. I'd probably go for the uh, Acoustic Pro. Yeah, yeah. Just saying, D drum. Um, nice. You can get a little case. But I'd even just love to experiment with, like, because obviously some people put them on a drum live so they can trigger, like, an electronic sample or something different. Mm. But this would be on an on an acoustic kit, but with super quiet skins to yeah. make it sound like a loud acoustic kit. Yeah. You know, because a lot of the time, you you know, you can buy those really big electronic drum kits with, like, the, you know, the the pads are really big and they've all got, mesh heads you know and yeah and stuff but they're so expensive yeah and if you make they're it still size, just yeah but like, like if you could why just not have it yeah have i think it's a kit. better way around to have a, yeah an actual kit with those skins because you're not essentially they're really not giving off a lot of room sound yeah but maybe even no more than just hitting a pad anyway you know yeah. the pads aren't quiet when you hit them with a stick no they're not and do you know what i another thing about electric kits so i've got mine in the flat and the flat I was in before, I was properly at the bottom. I was ground floor. But this flat was sort of upper ground. So it's like a three-story house. And uh, we've met we've met both the neighbors, neighbors upstairs. We're trying to get to... Elfie really wants to be friends with all the neighbors and have house parties or whatever. I'm a bit more reclusive. I'm like, well, you don't, you don't need to know everyone. But... Um, but no, the people upstairs, yeah, they seem a bit reserved, but she's met the people downstairs and they seem really cool. But I'm slightly worried about my drum kit because the the hit in the pads is fine, but it's the kick drum part, mm. you know. But here's the thing. So I think I told you about the neighbours, no, the people that lived in this flat before we did. Um, when I asked about noise, I said, is, is there ever like, loud music you know he was like what do you want to know and he was like yeah sometimes there are problems with music and i was like oh what happens he was like well people downstairs just come upstairs and tell me to turn it yeah. down and i was like oh so you're the problem so there's that guy so elfie asked these neighbors downstairs like what were they like because we kind of got a brief idea he was like they used to have parties all the time that and the music was they just play bongos they play bongos all night apparently and i was like fucking hell and alfie was like oh well my boyfriend's a drummer and i think the guy was like oh for fuck's sake she's like no no but he doesn't have doesn't have bongos though so i think uh yeah i think i'll be a quieter neighbor but it is that thing of like the kick drum is still it's the it's the physical actual putting your foot down and hitting yeah, a pedal yeah. that can go through to the floor um so I think that's the thing about electric kits. They're great, but that's the one part that you can't take that there noise away. There still is thudding. Yeah, still it's is still thud. thudding. Yeah. I've got something else funny to tell you about. Um, way off topic, but sure. I've got to get it in. So I got caught speeding the other day, apparently, so they say. 37 and a 30. It was my first one ever. Um, and... Basically, have you ever been? Have you ever been caught speeding? Yeah, you ever got yeah, the, yeah, once, yeah, 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 yeah. And um, so I got the letter in the post, and it said you can either pay a hundred pounds and take three points, or pay ninety pounds and do the speed awareness course. I was like, well, I don't really want the points, so I do the speed awareness course, and it's on Zoom. You can do it on Zoom. So I was like, great. Don't even have to go to some weird, you know, health center in the middle of Worthing or something. So. I booked it for the morning after I finished work. So I'd worked all day the day before, then did a sleep in at the job, finished work at 20 past eight and my Zoom call was at nine. And it was a it was a two and a half hour Zoom call. And it was just the funniest thing because it's run by this guy. I, can't remember, I think his name was Jude. It's not important. But there was like 10 other people on the call. None of us want to be there, obviously. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Yeah. but some of them were so clear about it, how they didn't want to be there. One guy was just chain smoking the whole way through, and every now and then, like the Zoom call would flip to him, and he wasn't even looking at the screen; he was just sort of looking away, just smoking. And uh, 
but some of the things people came out with were it was like oh my god you need to be on this course so there was this bit where it was like they showed us pictures of roads and said like how fast do you think the speed is on this road and one of it was a national speed limit and the the guesses people came out with one woman said 30 and it was like no it's a bit bit faster than that but then they were on the other end of the spectrum there was like a, it was like a town street street lights all of that and some guy guessed 60 and it was like <laughs> fucking hell no not that fast but the best bit i gotta tell you this the best bit was um he said like what stresses you out when you're driving you know sort of insinuating that's why we were speeding because we were stressed out and they said what are things that people get stressed out by <laughs> and um you know people were saying things like being late and stuff and then this one guy just went, other drivers. And they went, oh, okay, so what do you mean by other drivers? He went, I get really stressed out. <laughs> I get really stressed out when other drivers are dri driving too slowly. Like that. And I was like, that's amazing. That's amazing. We're on a speed awareness course. <laughs> And he's got so angry about people driving slowly. And I was about like, people doing the speed limit. But <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And I was like, fucking hell. But, um, but yeah. Finish yeah, I did that. one of them. I did one of them, maybe about six years ago, and it was um, in a hotel in Hailing Island or something. Yeah. <laughs> and I just found with this thing, those sorts of things, and I was just the same at school. It's like for me, when they ask you something, I just don't bother answering. Yeah. I just can't be bothered. Yeah. Let's all let's all just get through this. Yeah. And it's not because I don't respect it. No. It's like, yeah, I was caught speeding, I'll do the course. And there were some things you're like, oh, actually, that's pretty good. It refreshed yeah. me on certain things. Yeah. But you're like, don't say that. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, just don't mean. get in an argument with them. No, we're no. not here to debate the laws. Yeah. <laughs> you just if and the longer you do that, the longer we're here. Yeah, exactly. Keep your mouth shut. Say what you what they want to hear. Yeah. And well, that was it. At the end, and we can goes, all go out. He goes, does anyone have any uh, last questions? Or, and if anyone wants to stay on the call to chat with me about anything, I'm like, no. Like, <laughs> he's like, as soon as he said you are now free He's never seen leave, nine video like, screens go blank <laughs> <Yeah>. quicker. <laughs> <laughs> he's just sat there like, oh, one day maybe someone will stay on after three hours of this. And, so, you know. Does anyone, anyone going to go for a pint? Yeah. <laughs> no one wants to have a drink with you. Thursday two. works. <laughs> <laughs> but, um... That'll do us. Yeah, that'll got... do us. No, I've got a few things to do before the old gig. Yeah, I've got to relearn bass. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to set this electric gear up, see what it does. Yeah. And um, just check through things to make sure I know what I'm doing. Even packing my bag was weird this morning. Oh, yeah. I was like, right, oh, yeah, jeans, shirt. Yeah. Stick that out, you know, and just bottle of water. Yeah. Tissues, chewing gum, all my, all my usual. Well, I, usual I messed things. up last two weeks ago on a gig because I wore this tank top and shorts. Because when I'm when I'm driving, I'm hot. But mm -hmm. I turned up and I didn't have a a shirt that wasn't my gig shirt, so I had to get dressed for the gig before we'd even started setting up. Oh, and I was okay. like, oh, I don't like this. Yeah, yeah. But, um, That's it. The April weddings, you still got to bring a coat and a jumper. Yeah, you do. But you might be only in a t-shirt when you get there. Yeah, because you're there till late, you know, it gets mm -hmm. cold. Yeah. Nice. Sweet. Right. Well, boy, well, I'll see you tonight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we'll see everyone else next Thursday. Yes. Thanks for listening. Twitter, Instagram, email. Tell us what's going on. Yeah. Please yeah. write in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll see you later. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to Drum and Drummer. You can find us on Instagram at Drum and Drummer Podcast. And you can send us an email to drumanddrummerpod at gmail.com. Remember, just pick up the sticks and twerk.